This is Kirith with another episode of Stories from Lalamore. I guess. Maybe I'll just make this episode and delete it later. It, it's just Kirith. Just me. I am. Um, so. I, I met the man at the edge of the world. So yesterday. Rian was busy with the student council and Elle was too busy being pews and I went to the forest. I think Rian's right. I might be making excuses to go there. Even though I don't like it or I, I shouldn't like it. I don't know. I was... I was bored. And I didn't want to go home right away so I went to the forest. There are trails there so it's super hard to get lost. I just walked... And then the forest got all weird. Like, the trees went all white and they reached way too high. It didn't look like our forest. And I, I should have been scared, but I heard music. And it, it, it sort of sounded like... If you go to the beach and hear a wave. And with, like, strings. Like, someone was plucking the sound of a wave on an instrument. And then they started making the whoosh, whoosh, wrestling sound that the wind makes through the trees. And, and I found them. In the middle of the woods, there was this sort of rock that looked like, kind of like a bench, but not really. And there was a person sitting there playing a, um, it was like a, a harp, but also a guitar. I, I don't really know what it was. But they were once playing the wrestling in the leaves and the waves on beaches, and there were even crickets and stuff in it. I, I sort of walked up to them and they smiled and said, hi, you must be very lost. And I said, no, I'm not. Which was only kind of a lie, because I was lost. Except, it didn't feel like it. It felt like... Like I was supposed to be there. So, I told them that they messed up a note. And they stopped playing and looked at me really hard. And it's like, all the sound in the world stopped, just for a little bit. All I could hear was a throne thrown from my heart and my ears. And then they put their hands back on the instrument and started playing again. And the sound came back. I guess you're right. They said... They said it like they were a little surprised. And they were looking through me for a second. Before smiling again, I asked them who they were. And they said, I'm the man at the edge of the world. But they said it like it was full of capital letters. Like capital T, V, and capital M. Man, like it wasn't who they were, but what they were. Like a title. And I said, oh. Because I wasn't sure what else to say. I didn't know there was a man at the edge of the world. I didn't even know there was an edge of the world. It didn't even look like an edge. It just looked like a really weird forest. So I felt dumb. But they didn't stop playing. The song sort of sound like the sound grass makes when the wind hits it. So I asked, can I watch you play? And the man at the edge of the world looked really happy. They said, sure, why not? It's been a long time since I had an audience. And I asked, how long? And they said, centuries, millennia. But, like, all confused. And then they crinkled their nose and said that they were getting old. And I think they were even older than Mr. Eldar. They played a song that sounded the way magic looks in the sky. All pretty, waving colors with bits of stars. I didn't know what magic sounded like before. But I think I know now. I can sort of hear it humming in the air. Like, I didn't recognize it before, but it's always been there. For a really long time. It felt really long. And then I woke up, I was in Mr. Rion's dad's car. And it was late. Not night, but like dinner time ish. He said he found me sleeping in the woods near his house, almost in his backyard. And that I must have been really, really tired because I didn't wake up when he picked me up and moved me inside. And that I slept through him calling my mom's and most of a car ride. And then he asked me a bunch of questions about if I fell down or if my head hurt. And it didn't. I was just really tired. I told him that I saw the man at the edge of the world and that they were playing really nice music. But I think that just made him really worried. He walked me all the way home and had a real long talk with Mama Mama, hugged me super tight and told me that I shouldn't go wandering alone in the woods. I told her that I stayed on the trail and that nothing bad happened. But she was still really, really worried. She asked if I was still tired and I said yes. And then she made me go to sleep even though the sun was still up. She helped me the whole time. Mama said I didn't have to go to school this morning, but I wanted to tell Rhea and Alice about the man at the edge of the world, so I went in. 
but mom drove me instead of letting me walk. And so she picked me up right after. I think she was probably scared too. That I'd disappear. Even if I didn't mean it. But in school, it didn't go over too good. Rian didn't believe me, and I couldn't tell Alice, and I asked the teacher in the middle of the class about the man at the edge of a world, and she said there was no edge of a world, and I was like, no, duh, but there's a man there, and then everyone laughed, and the teacher told me to stop being disruptive. And after that, the jerks that Alice hangs out with found me in the halls, and Alice just stared and had that sad look on their face, and didn't stop them. Well, they sort of tried, but they couldn't do it without telling them they were my friend, so... They sort of joined in before they kind of convinced the group there was something better to do than pick on me. Which is... Sort of nice. But also makes me feel like picking on me is a waste of time, which... I should be okay with. But it still bothers me. I told my moms about him and they said that maybe they contact the coven head about the man at the edge of the world. But I think they were just saying that. I think they think I hit my head or that I'm getting sick again. But I feel fine. I just, I don't know what to do. It kind of reminds me of things we're not supposed to talk about because it makes adults uncomfortable. Like getting kicked out of the coven and my grandma. Sometimes it feels like I'm the only one who remembers how things used to be. Maybe it's just me. That misses our old apartment, and our neighbors, and grandma, and all the neighbor's kids who pretend like they don't know me. Well, they all suck anyway. I'll find a day when Rian and Elsa aren't busy, and then I'll take them to see the man at the edge of the world. And they'll have to believe me. Right? Right. They'd have to believe me. Okay, first I have to find the man again, so I can take Rian and Alice to them. It took a lot longer than I thought it would to be able to sneak out to the woods again. Mom drove me to school and Mama walked me back for an entire week. Rian came over once and we couldn't really do anything because they kept checking on me. I didn't talk about the man at the edge of the world with him. I'm still mad that he didn't believe me. And maybe, if I bring my recorder, he'll believe me when he hears it. Okay, Kier, and listener, the plan is to go to the forest, find my man at the edge of the world, and record them playing, bring it back to Rian and Alice so they believe me, and come to the forest, and maybe show my moms if they're not mad. Or maybe, even if they are mad, maybe it'll get them to stop being mad. Let's go! backyard again again yeah again can you get dad why can't you get him because i asked you dingbat kirith kirith Yeah, Tommy, Keith ended up in the backyard again. Yes, no, I can drive her down. It's it's the same as last time. No, she looks fine. Yeah, but this is weird, even for Keith. Is is 
everything all right? You know, if you need anything, we're always here for you. I know you and you have things handled. I just wanted to let you know. Mm -hmm. I'll be right over. Oh, has this been recording the whole time? The recorder didn't work. And all that got me was grounded. I get driven to school and picked up after and nobody wants to hear anything about the man at the edge of the world. I wish... I wish I could have recorded them for you. It was just as pretty as the first time. They seemed surprised when I came back. And I learned that all of her songs have words to them. Maybe the man at the edge of the world is a spirit. And that's why no one wants to talk about them. Or why no one believes me. But I'm not a liar. They're real. You can even hear them really, really quiet before the recording messes up. But nobody's listening to me. I bet Grandma would have listened. She always listened to me, no matter what I was talking about. Even if it was just a story I made up. She'd make tea in this really old fancy kettle, with animals all up and down the sides, and we'd sit down at the table, and she'd... She'd just... Listen. And when I ran out of things to say, she'd tell me stuff, too. And when she was busy, I, I could go to one of the neighbors and tell them stuff. I, I really miss living in the coven. I'm not supposed to say that. I ain't supposed to pretend that I understand why we have to go. Even if I'm really, really bad at it. I want to go home. Even if I don't remember a whole lot about it. Well, you know what, kid? Moping has never stopped anybody's anything. Right now, I'm grounded. But as soon as I get ungrounded, I'm gonna take Alice and Ria to meet my man at the edge of the world. But until then, since I'm here, what can I do from here? 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 Well, Rian spends a lot of time studying. And I do live in a bookstore. Maybe one of those books and tell me how Grandma broke the barrier! Kira, are you sure this is a good idea? You just got ungrounded. Maybe we should go to Ilfa's instead. But you won't believe me until you see it. I believe that you think there's a man at the edge of the world. But that's not the same as believing me, Rian. Are you sure there isn't a podcast episode or, or something you want to do instead? Ellis, this is really important. I can't have my best friends think I'm a liar. I, I don't think you're a liar, Kira. Do you think the man at the edge of the world is real then? Come on, it's this way. Over the hill, see? This is where the trees changed in... Why aren't the trees changing? They changed the last time I was here. The, it was right here. They're not changing now. I know that, but it doesn't make sense. I promise you, it was right here. Kira. I'm not lying. The trees were here, and the man at the edge of the world is supposed to be here, and... Kira. Like, go of me, Rian. I just... I just want you to... Rian, it's here. I promise. I promise I'm not lying. <laughs> Should I get your dad? <laughs> so, I, I can't prove to Alice or Rion that the man at the edge of the world is real. And Mama and Mom still won't talk to me about it. And all the dumb books in this dumb bookstore are useless because none of them says anything about the man at the edge of the world. And maybe I really did imagine them. And their music, but if that's true, I, I don't know. I don't know why I 
can hear them while we're recording. Anyway, we're gonna try something different today. This is Kier from outside the post office. There's only one post office in all of Lawmore. That's because there aren't a lot of people here. They have all sorts of ways to deliver letters and stuff. There's stuff that delivers itself, like the box we sent fat in last time, and stuff that needs to be delivered by special trained witches or people who learn how to handle magic stuff. There are all sorts of weird spirits that make even weirder contracts and stuff. It's also really close to my house. So we're going inside. Hi, Mr. Yellow. Whoa, Kira. It's you. Uh, did, did your mom send you in to pick something up? You know, I'd be more than happy to deliver to your- I'm here for me today, Mr. Yellow. Then... Wait there. Stand on the X. I'm real sorry that I broke all the boxes last time. You didn't mean to do anything. Just stand on the X and we should be fine. Um, I want to know if I can mail a letter to the man at the edge of the world. Now, Kira, if you know we can't mail letters to your story characters. I know. They're real. I just need to mail a letter to the edge of the world. You know that the world is a sphere. Right? Uh-huh. And that, by definition, there is no edge. I know that. It's a place. I don't think I can. Uh, okay, if that won't work, I want to mail a letter to my friend Nellis. Nellis? Uh-huh. And where would you like me to mail it? To the edge of the world. Kira. Okay, okay. Then can I send a letter to the oh, forest? Are you trying to send something to Rion? That no, I can... not Rion. Now let's. We live in the forest. Rion is the only one I know who lives that way. So I can't send a letter to someone living in the forest. Not unless they have an address. Kirith, is there someone living then, in the- Can I have one of those letters that delivers themselves? The ones with wings? <laughs> those are very- Is that enough? Yes, Kirith, yes. Oh, sorry. Here, just hold on. I'll get you a bag. Kirith, you have to wear gloves when you're riding on this, okay? Or else it might take off early. Thank you, Mr. Yellowhill. This is Kirith from the forest. So, uh, I have the letter. I think, I think Mr. Yellowhill thinks they can only deliver stuff to addresses. But Grandma told me that they don't have to go to addresses if you know how to change the magic circle. It can deliver stuff to where I want it to go. Like, if I wrote to Rian on the back, it would go to Rian, because it knows that's what I want it to do. My magic is a part of me. Grandma knew how to do all sorts of stuff like that. She says... Um... She said that we're too focused on what magic is supposed to do that we forgot what it is. But she also said that I'm not supposed to do stuff like this because something about laws and breaking something, something regulations. Anyway, I did it and I wrote to the man at the edge of the world. And all I have to do is take off my gloves. I can't touch stuff like this. Or have cell phones or watches. I just break them when they're with me too long. Actually, the recorder is kind of the only thing I haven't broken. It makes me feel like Grandma left it for me. Okay, there it, oh no, it's a lot faster than it's supposed to be, so I maybe messed up that part a little, but it's taking me to where I tried to take Rihanna and Alice. I think it, it's still really, really fast, ah, oh, that fell, huh, where'd it go? It was right here! Where did it... It disappeared? I really don't get it. I didn't really make a plan for what to do if a letter disappeared. So, I went and asked Mr. Yellowrail, and he said that if I wrote the address wrong, it just wouldn't move. Or it would come back. But, I waited. And waited. And I think it might have found the man at the edge of the world. 
but I don't think we have a type of person to have a pen and stamp. So, it's probably not coming back. I also don't really know where it went. So I went home and got all my stuff because I looked while I was grounded and none of the books in our shop said anything about the man at the edge of the world and mama and ma won't listen to me and Rhea and Alice don't believe me and that's almost... So, I'm going to go to the one person who knew almost as much about magic as my grandma. The coven head. Can you hear that? It's a barrier. It surrounds all the coven houses. Mommy used to hate hearing it all the time. She had to sleep with earplugs in. But I think it sounds nice. It makes me feel safe. At least, it did. Before, um, started keeping me up, too. Ew. So, I'm in the very back of all the coven houses. I used to hide here when I wanted to be alone. It's quiet, and you can come see the river, and nobody ever comes back here except for me. I had a lot of time to myself lately. I did a whole lot of research on all the ingredients I saw my grandma using in the school. Coven wards are barriers. They can't be broken. That's sort of the point. But they can fail when they get sort of old. That's why the coven remakes them every year. I think that's what grandma was trying to do. Maybe make one part of a barrier old enough that the spirit she let through could come inside. Sort of like, you know, how if you rub salt and metal, it makes things get old faster? I think this spell was Grandma's salt. Anyway, I think I got the amounts right. But there were a lot of books saying a lot of different things. Ew. It smells about as bad as you think. Grandma's the one who taught me how to draw magic circles. I still couldn't use them while she was still alive. So I'd make a new one and have her start it. And if it was really good, she'd tell me how clever I am and give me a peppermint from her pocket. And then she'd tell me how to fix it or make it better. And sometimes we got this game where she'd start a magic circle. We'd, we'd um, draw pieces of it so that we each decided something different it would do. And one time we got the tiny paper to fold itself into a little dancer and it leapt across the table. Neither mama or mom are that good at magic circles. They never end it right, and it just stays a piece of paper. Anyway, the only bad part about this is that this is the biggest magic circle I've ever, ever made. Um, I guess you all know that I'm bad at small magic, right? Well, making magic circles work is small magic. With the magic circles I make for me, I can sort of fix it so that I can take my magic and kind of get rid of it so that it does what I want. But this is a really big magic circle with lots and lots of rules about time and stuff. And I don't know where I'd put the thing with a tail in at it so it wouldn't act weird. But it should be okay. Because I had a lot of time to practice. All I have to do is, is put my hands here and start it. And it should just make a little me-sized hole. And I'll just let someone know that I walked by and there was a small piece that looked old. And they can patch it up. And it'll be like nothing ever happened. And there... Uh-oh. I think I might have... Um... Gareth, do you know why you're here? Is this a trick question? No. I came here to ask you about the man at the edge of the world. Then, what, Gareth? Our barrier is down, 
and we saw you running from the scene. Did you see anything? The whole barrier? It's very important that you tell me if you saw anything. I didn't mean to. It was just supposed to be a care-sized hole. And, um, well... Here, did, did you take down the warts? By, by yourself? That's what I was trying to tell you! I came to talk to you about the Man at the Edge of the World because I met them and no one believed me, so I went back and no one believed me, but I got a recording of them talking really quietly before my recorder stopped recording, and it wasn't enough! But I can't take people there with me, and every time I visit them, people find me asleep in Rion's backyard, and everyone got worried, and I, I got grounded, and Mama and Mom don't want me to talk about it because they don't want me to talk about anything! I can't talk about being kicked out of the coven, and I'm not supposed to talk about Grandma Otho and Rion's busy all the time, and Elle's just for an entire week! And everyone keeps telling me the man at the edge of the world isn't real, but they are, and I saw them, and I'm not a liar, and this is the month that Grandma Otho died, and nobody remembered! And you never answered the letter I sent you, and I miss the coven, and I miss being home, and I thought that you might know about the man at the edge of the world, and could tell me about them, because I don't understand! Oh... <clears throat> That, that's right, son. All of those been gone for th three years now? Yeah. I'm, I'm sorry I didn't answer your letter. I don't have a good reason for why I didn't. I, I should have sent a response saying, I'm very sorry, Kira. It's okay. All the kids pretend like I was never here, too. Okay, I... How about I make some time next weekend, and we can go to the flower shop and visit your grandma together. Would that work for you? Promise? I promise. No, there, there is... The matter of the, the barrier, um, Kirith, Kirith, I, I am afraid, but I'm going to have to tell your parents. Okay. This is Kirith, recording from outside the coven's head office. I, uh, I saw the look Mama gave me when she came in. I think I'm in a lot of trouble. This is Kier, reporting from my room. So, I got in trouble, but I think Mom and Mama were just more confused than anything. Mama tried to be angry when she said, Kier, you know better than to take down the coven wards. But I think something happened. Because she started laughing. She turned to Mom and said, our girl is ridiculous. And Mom started doing a half laughing. She does what she's trying really hard not to laugh. And they sent me to my room instead and just said, just don't do it again, Kier. So, at least I didn't get grounded. But I did get homework. So, because I'm not part of the coven, I took down the warts. All the coven heads had to get together and talk about me. And they decided that I'm too dangerous to be left untrained. So, now... I had extra school on Wednesdays and Fridays and homework. And nobody told me anything about the man at the edge of the world. But I did find this letter in my room today. They wrote on the inside of the envelope. It says, lovely drawing. I hope you don't mind that I kept it. From the man at the edge of the world. So they do have a pit. But I don't think anyone will believe me. Even if I show them. Yet. I wonder if I send them a camera. Can they send back pictures? I gotta save up for another box so I can test it out. Ah! Uh, I think it's all for Story to Lawnmower. Tune in next week to find out what I'm up to! This is Kirith. Um, I thought about not making this episode, but it feels important. I want you
you guys to know about Grandma too, even if it's only through stories. I think she would have liked my podcast. Stories to Law More is made by the It Me Podcast Production LLC. All voices are done by me. Transcripts for the episode can be found in the link in the description or at itmepodcast.com, where you can also find coloring pages, bonus materials, and other podcasts. Letters can be sent to storiesfromlalamore at gmail.com. If you want to support the creator, rate, review, comment, or tell a friend about the show. If you're a grown-up and want to offer more support, maybe you can think about donating to our Kofi or Patreon linked in the description. Our outro is Sticky Me by Josh Woodward from the Free Music Archive and is distributed under the Creative Commons Attribution License. If you want a podcast where you get to choose your own adventures and take a super cozy trip to new alien worlds, you might like Traveling Light. Their trailer starts now. To the community at Emerine who carry the light. Hello, my friends. I realise it has not been so terribly long since last we were together, but I hope you will forgive my writing so soon. It has been a long time since anyone ventured forth from Emerain on our community's behalf. I hope I can report back on the doings of the wide world in such a way that will bring you comfort and encouragement, and that my missives reveal the galaxy and its people to you as the light reveals the holy substance at the centre of existence. I am crossing a threshold. One which I will not pass through again. I trust you will not think it arrogant to want the moment witnessed, if only at a distance and in retrospect. After all, by the time you receive this, I will be long gone, away among the stars and beginning my journey to Karen in earnest. Travelling Light is a science fantasy podcast from the creator of Monstrous Agonies. Follow the traveller on their journey through the stars and help shape their world and the stories within it through audience submissions and choose your own adventure decision making. Travelling Light is a Monstrous Productions podcast. Find us on Tumblr, Instagram and Twitter or visit our website at monstrousproductions.org to find out more.